sweet! We just got a half inch rainstorm event. That may not seem like much, but it was an intense storm and intense enough that it generated a good amount of runoff. Enough runoff that we harvested tens of thousands of gallons of storm water in what has been a record drought year. It's really key that you are ready to plant the rain when it comes, even if it's a small amount. The key is to be able to capture every drop of it. I want to quickly show you some of what we captured just on this one neighborhood block. It's very substantial and you're also going to see where uh, some neighbors missed out because they didn't do their basic maintenance. So this is sweet. I thought this was going to be the driest water harvesting Kakakami chicane on the block but it actually is totally, almost totally filled up. More runoff is coming to this spot than I had anticipated, which is fantastic. The wettest one is this one on the other side because it gets a lot of the water off the roof. That building. So we got the roof runoff from this auto parts store that is freely watering all these streets on the west side of the auto parts store and warehouse. So all these trees are then grown and irrigated for free from that rainwater to freely passively shade and cool the west side. So you can see we've got one stepped basin after another. This one filled and then more water from that downspout joined it, overflowed into this basin. And did we get water? Yes, we got water. <laughs> so once this filled, it overflowed around here and build this basin, which is also getting more water from that downspout, okay? So it then overflows around here and build this basin, which then overflows and got another downspout, build this basin. <laughs> And on it goes. But the great thing is, this is not going to increase a mosquito problem. It's actually going to be part of the mosquito solution because all this water will infiltrate in about an hour now that the rain has ceased. And uh, so that water will be stored subsurface, not on the surface, so mosquitoes can't access it and can't go from egg to adult. Okay, so here we are, um, less than an hour after we shot that last bit with all these filled, filled with water, there's no surface water. It is all infiltrated in less than an hour. So we are part of the mosquito solution, not the mosquito problem. And we're gonna hold on to this water a lot longer because we're storing it subsurface, so we'll lose it much more slowly to evaporation. Rather than evaporation, it's going to go into the more productive evapotranspiration. <laughs> So it's going to go through the life of these trees, the understory plants, and so forth. Just a little puddle here, that'll be gone in 20 minutes. This was not anticipated. In the mulch was some squash seed. So we planted these hardy perennials, but we've got a bunch of squash that, uh, well, gonna harvest and uh, take home to the goats. So when it comes to um, growing food within these in-street and street-side water harvesting basins, there's some basic precautions you want to take. So there are toxins on the road, um, just the hydrocarbons from the asphalt itself, um, from wear down of people's tires, and uh, there's the heavy metals and brake pads and so forth. We don't grow annual food crops, that, especially those we're going to eat raw, in these uh, in-street and street-side basins. This squash was just a lucky fluke. The seed was in our compost that we used to uh, mulch the top of the basin. Uh, so instead, what we do is we um, will plant um, perennial, woody perennial species. And uh, their tendency is to sequester uh, any toxins they might uptake in the woody, non-reproductive parts of the plant, not the reproductive parts. The reproductive parts would be the fruit, um, the seed, and so forth. We focus on planting perennial food producing plants from which we would harvest the, the, the food parts well above the water line. Okay, so it's not coming in direct contact with those toxins coming in the stormwater runoff. What's the overall context? I mean, we're on a neighborhood street. Okay, and the top of the watershed is very close to that intersection behind me. 
So um, we're not on a major industrial street. So the uh, comparatively, the amount of toxins is, is very low. And then we're also helping bioremediate it with healthy soil life. And over time, as these plants grow, the root networks grow, and we get more soil life and organic matter accumulating, that's gonna uh, create more uh, natural biofiltration or um, natural filtration or bioremediation of uh, whatever toxins make their way in here. So uh, my neighbor wasn't here when the rain came and he didn't clean out the street gutter before the rain uh, storm arrived. So his, um, his stormwater inlet to a street side basin was clogged. To unclog it, just gotta grab it. So you gotta do the maintenance, it's simple. Had this inlet been cleared, um, he would have harvested at least 4,000 gallons of water in that one storm event. Even a bigger hole will clog. With the amount of organic matter that was in the street, it clogs more readily the smaller the opening, so, um, but it really comes to cost. So it's, uh, it's a quarter the cost to do these holes than it is to do a curb cut. Um, and really, as long as someone's just doing the basic uh, maintenance, they both work just as well. If you're out doing the basic maintenance, like if you actually get out in the rainstorms, um, you're getting connected to all this. You see what works and what doesn't, and then you can make the necessary little tweaks. If you're never out here observing it, you don't know what's working and what's not working. You don't learn, you don't evolve, you don't uh, help tweak your system. And if you're not evolving you and yourself and your system, uh, you're not helping your neighbors evolve because they're not seeing your evolving example. So, um, yeah, I think it's essential that we learn and evolve with these systems by interacting with them and build a relationship with them. And it's not just water flow, it's also the plants. Like what species are doing better, what are doing worse, um, what species might we want to replicate in similar microclimates and what species might we want to avoid. If you want to get more information on how to do this, check out my books, Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond, available from me at deep discount at harvestingrainwater.com.